It takes a strong man to lift a car, but it takes an even stronger man to admit when he was wrong. I can do both, but I'll only be doing one today, and that's admitting I was wrong about a show that I thought had absolutely zero chance of being entertaining in even the slightest way. And the show that I'm talking about is Twisted Metal. It's based on a video game franchise that I cherish deeply from my childhood. All of the trailers and all of the clips they released were horrible, and I made a whole video complaining about it because I felt personally attacked. First, they make a Halo show and completely ruin it, wipe their dirty cheeks with a beloved property with a horrible show, and then all of a sudden, Twisted Metal, what's next? It's like they're going up here in my noodle and looking for all the things I used to love growing up in order to ruin them with a TV show. And I still do stand by that video. Every single piece of promotional material they released for Twisted Metal was turbo ass. But now that I've finished watching the show since it just came out a couple days ago, I can confidently say that I subscribe to a conspiracy theory that there was some kind of internal sabotage run on this show from the inside. There was a spy looking to sink this before it even had a chance to swim. Because all of the trailers and clips are the worst moments from the show. The show itself is actually fun. Now, I know that's become a bit of a cliche when something isn't great, but you want to be nice to it, but I use that in the truest sense of the word. I don't think Twisted Metal is a great show by any means, but it is an actually enjoyable one, which I really didn't think there'd be a chance of, because, again, all the trailers and clips made it seem like it was written by, you know, the fucking Saints Row team from 2022. It had, like, forespoken-level dialogue and jokes. It was rough. And those jokes are in the show, like, it is very much heavy on a lot of jokes per minute. It, like, the, the JPM is off the fucking charts. The jokes per minute is going to be blowing your hair back with cringe from time to time. But for every 100 stinkers, there's a couple of good ones scattered throughout there. And this was what I was most concerned of because for some reason the trailers and clips only showed a couple of comedy routines. There is a lot of action in the show, which should be the focal point of a Twisted Metal show since the games are all about fucking car combat with guns, missiles, and wacky, zany characters doing crazy shit like Sweet Tooth. And in the games, it gets very dark with like the narrative. The show, not so much. There's a couple of like darker moments, but very much so the show's emphasis is on comedy, but it does have a healthy dollop of action as well, which I just didn't even think it would have any at all based on everything they released prior to it coming out. So this is going to be a little pseudo moist meter. It's nice to be pleasantly surprised because I expected this to be horrible. I really did. And I totally forgot it was even coming out, but last night on stream, chat reminded me that it came out and they were shocked that it turned out to be somewhat decent. And they're right. It is decent. I had a fun time watching it. That being said... Again, it's not a great show. A lot of the writing here, aside from like jokes when it actually is trying to tell a story, is laughable. Especially with the two main characters, John Doe and Quiet. Now, their chemistry is fine, but a lot of the things that happen between them makes it seem like it actually is an AI-generated script that has a couple of bullet points that it needs to hit, but didn't really know how to naturally weave it in there. So I shit you not, in one of the episodes there's a scene where the two of them fuck in a ball pit, then they get into an argument, then they fuck in the ball pit again, and then they get into an argument, then one of them leaves, and then there's a lightning storm, so, so then they have to come back, and then, then they, like, reconcile, and they're all good again. Like, this back and forth keeps happening, like, th like this. It's this constant flip-flopping. Like a light switch being turned off and on, like Nosferatu from Spongebob in that episode with the hash-slinging slasher. Like, they very clearly had things they wanted to convey, but they weren't super effective at conveying it. And also, the vast majority of the conversation between the two, the two main characters usually ends with them saying, fuck you. That's usually where the conversation will wrap up and then they'll, they'll go on their way driving somewhere. It's pretty weak. Like, the, the writing isn't exactly what you'd consider fine-tuned, but what's crazy is, it didn't take away from the enjoyment of the show. Because it feels right at home in a stupid world. The entire universe they built here is stupid, and every character in it is a fucking idiot. Like, the entire world got hit with, like, stupid radiation or something. There must have been, like, a fucking solar flare that blew up everyone's brain, and now everyone's got brain worms, and they're all just actual morons in this world. Which is kind of charming in its own way. The actual story of the Twisted Metal show 
is, uh, you know, 20 years ago, there was a bug that took out pretty much all electronics. It, the opening monologue had me rolling my eyes. It was mentioning, you know, porn's gone, so the world collapsed. That people couldn't access the internet anymore, and the world went to shit. So now it's a post-apocalypse, it's a dystopia, and our main character, John Doe, is what's called a milkman who does deliveries for settlements back and forth. And every character you meet is dumb. Actually stupid. So when there's bad writing like this, it almost feels like it's on purpose to a certain extent, which I guess is a real blessing to the writers because they could be as lazy as they want with like character relationships and it doesn't feel awful to watch. Because you kind of expect it in this broken world filled with broken people. So, I know it sounds like I'm shitting on it, but I'm really not. Like, that's not even actually a complaint for me with the writing being bad. There's a lot of bad jokes, and that is a complaint, because there is a lot of jokes that just do not land and fall super flat. They also repeat a lot of the same jokes. Like, it's, it's like they forgot that they told that joke an episode ago, and it's not even meant to be a callback. It's just they said the exact same thing in a different situation, and I don't believe it was on purpose. I think they just actually forgot but there is a lot of jokes that don't work, but there are quite a few that do. And I think the real star of this show is Sweet Tooth, whom I was the most concerned about going into it, because Sweet Tooth is the face of Twisted Metal. He's not the main character here, but he does have a lot of screen time. In the video game franchise, he is a wacky character, of course, but he is fucked up. He has an extremely dark past. Like I mentioned in the last video, one of his main his main wish in the last Twisted Metal game is he wanted to kill his daughter. The, his daughter was the only person he was unable to actually kill, so his wish from Calypso was to be able to go and kill her. But it turns out she had already killed herself from the trauma that Sweet Tooth had, had inflicted upon her after he killed her family. So, like, it's, it's very dark shit that Sweet Tooth deals with. And in all of the trailers and clips, they just make Sweet Tooth look to be, like, some kind of really embarrassing Joker clone. Like the uh, classic, I'm the Joker, baby, meme, right? Like it didn't seem like they really understood Sweet Tooth as a character and what would make him both fun to watch and also intimidating and scary. Again, all of the trailers and clips make it just seem like he's going to be a goofball, we live in a society, Joker meme character. Like that shit on Facebook, you know, poop in a toilet, no one bats an eye, poop in the fridge and everyone loses their mind type energy kind of Joker character. But in the actual show here, he shines. They do a good job with the character. He doesn't really share a whole ton in common with his video game counterpart, but it really does feel like they understood somewhat of the spirit of what Sweet Tooth should be in a live action format. So I, I did appreciate him, like I enjoyed him on screen here. Yeah, he wasn't the main character or anything, but, but they do have a large chunk of an episode dedicated to kind of laying out the foundation to what made Sweet Tooth crack, and what turned him into a psychopath maniac. And they also do bring in some other elements from his past that really lay the foundation for him as a character, and throughout the entire show, he's not only, like, extremely entertaining, like, the best jokes in the show actually come from Sweet Tooth, but he also has, like, the best moments in general. Most of the action that's really good filters through Sweet Tooth's kills and Sweet Tooth's driving ability and his his ice cream truck. All of the best moments about Twisted Metal actually do come from Sweet Tooth, which I'm really happy about because I thought they were going to fuck him up in a big way, but they don't. Samoa Joe as Sweet Tooth here fucking crushed it. I just really didn't dislike the show, even though there is still a lot to not like about it because there's so much downtime in this show. There is a lot of moments where there's really nothing happening. There's some very bad visuals too. For example, there's something called like a Watkins storm or something. I'm already forgetting exactly what they called it. But basically it's like this storm with colorful lightning that keeps striking all over the place. And there's a scene, like I mentioned, where the character runs out there and John Doe gets zapped by it. And it looks horrible. It looks like something out of CW, right? Like it, it's horrible effects. There is a lot of mom well, I won't say a lot. There's a few moments like that where the visuals fucking collapse and look terrible. But even still, I just didn't dislike it. It was a lot more entertaining than I would have ever expected it to be based on everything they released for its marketing materials. I do wish they had spent a little bit longer polishing that up because again, that is, in particular, that lightning storm was terrible. That was horrible. That, that entire scene should have just been fucking cut. It looked like an Adobe's After Effects tutorial on YouTube. It was bad. 
And there's a couple other moments like that. That's definitely the most egregious of them, though. And I do also wish there was more car combat. A lot of the action in the show takes place outside of cars because, obviously, it's easier to film that. But there is there is still a, a couple of chunks that have car combat, and that's when the show's at its best. I just wish there was more. I really wish they had leaned harder on that. I think the opening scene here is really good with the car combat. It kind of peters off a little bit there, and you don't see too much for a little while. And then towards the end, it once again gets its footing back, and they have more car combat. But there's a lot of in the middle where there's pretty much none, and I just wish there was more. I, I won't go on too much longer about this show. Uh, overall, though, I'm just happy that it was entertaining. It does set itself up for a season two that really does feel like it's supposed to be going more true to Twisted Metal itself. I don't want to get into spoilers, but the way that the season one here wraps up leads into what you would expect Twisted Metal to be about, a tournament. And that's very exciting. So I think they did a good job of laying out the world here with Season 1. I wish it wasn't so heavy on lame jokes that fell flat. And like, they did have some good ones, and I just hope that if it does get a Season 2, it puts the car combat more front and center, and focuses more on refining good jokes as opposed to just an overwhelming flood of non-stop jokes. So, overall though, I'm just surprised that it wasn't a complete disaster, because all of the marketing material, all the promotional material they released for this made it look irredeemably awful. So, yeah, I just wanted to make a video saying that I was wrong, and this turned out to be a pretty fun watch. That's really about it. See ya.